Okay. So welcome to everyone who is watching this now or later. So as we get ready to move into the fall and we're doing our Christian formation, um, I thought one way to start us off here at St. Luke's is just for you all to get to hear a little bit more about me um, and my journey and what brought me to um, ministry in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead now and share my screen. So because uh, this is going to have some nice little photos to go with it. Okay. I'm going to just go ahead and pause it here. So this is Winchester Cathedral um, in England. And this is actually where I, um, I got my call. So when I was a high schooler, uh, the Diocese of Alabama had a youth pilgrimage to England and to Zay, which happened to be a, a very good price for going on such a pilgrimage. So I took the opportunity to, to go here and to be part of um, this trip and um, we'll go ahead and show just um, another little view of the church there. It's, it's quite a lovely place. And I learned a lot more about it afterwards. So Winchester Cathedral is actually where Jane Austen um, is buried. Um, Jane Austen, of course, of the um, Pride and Prejudice fame. Um, so it's here in Winchester Cathedral that she's buried. So that's one thing that I learned much later um, after I went to Winchester. And here's um, another view um, of that uh, stone where she's buried as well. Um, which if I remember, yeah, and looking at it again, nothing's mentioned about her writing career there. So another thing I learned much later about Winchester Cathedral that makes it really interesting. Um, so this is in the basement and there's this little statue there, but during parts of the year, there's a lot of flooding down there. So depending on what time of year you're at Win Winchester Cathedral, it'll look very, very different. But on this pilgrimage that the Diocese of Alabama put on for us, we were there specifically for St. Swithin. So um, Swithin has a shrine um, there uh, because he would have been um, a, a saint and bishop at Winchester Cathedral way back when. But the reason that we went, uh, went there, and this is the only photo here that I myself did not take, uh, there's a legend that he, um, uh, as, as a bishop, was uh, crossing this bridge, and there was a young woman uh, there who uh, these men were being very mean to. They were harassing her. They knocked over her basket of eggs, and according to legend, uh, Swithin bent down to help the woman, picked up one of the eggs, and it was miraculously made whole. So that was kind of the story that led us um, to this shrine. You can see it a little bit better here um, later on. Some of my photos bounce back and forth um, over the years. So this was a time when there was some construction um, near here. So this is the back view of the shrine. And we did a, a service back here. And um, if you go on my YouTube page, you'll recognize uh, this particular area with its beautiful icons, here being the icon of Jesus in the center. So it was here that we did a little ceremony. And um, our Bishop Suffragan at the time, um, Mark Andrus, who's now uh, Bishop of California, uh, he led us in the ceremony and, and we went up to him one by one um, and, and or to some of the other priests that were with us on the trip. And I just I remember going up to him and um, him asking what's on your mind. And before I could even think about it, I said, am I supposed to be a priest? Um, and I think like it was actually am I to be a priest or, or something like that. And um, this is something I knew at the time I wanted to study scripture. Um, and 
I, I didn't feel this call at this point to ordain ministry. So this was kind of my big wake up call and moment of like, oh my goodness, what's God doing in my life? So after this happened, right behind here, uh, there's a chapel uh, dedicated to Joan of Arc um, with uh, this lovely little uh, sculpture um, there of, of, of one of the quotes from her. Um, and so I was sitting probably right about here um, where this picture is and being very emotional and basically thinking as a 15 year old at the time, like what just happened? So fortunately as part of this pilgrimage, so we spent a week in England and then we spent the next week in Taze. Um, so this is a much older um, photo uh, when I, back when I was uh, taking film because uh, I was really into photography at the time. Uh, still am. Uh, so it's not the best photo. And so I apologize for that. But this gives you a sense of the uh, main chapel in Tizé. So Tizé is a community in France that's set up um, mostly for young people, but people um, of all ages throughout the world um, go and visit there. And it's known for its contemplative prayer. And uh, those who sing in choir may be familiar with the music that comes from there. So this was a really, uh, and I'll cycle through some photos from here. So this is really a great place for me to go um, and to really reflect on what all had just happened and to really reflect on what, what, it, what had God um, just given me. Um, in this moment, um, what was it that God was working um, within me? And my conclusion at the end of this week was, um, I am not old enough <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Keep in mind, again, I was 15 at the time that I'm not old enough to you know, make a decision to think about this. But what happened is that opened me up to thinking, more and more about what is God calling me to do? Um, is God calling me to ordain ministry? Um, which really affected, it affected how I approached uh, my, the rest of my high school years. And it approached, um, it affected where I went to college, St. John's, um, having something that, that I, I could, learn a lot of different things and speak to a lot of different people as a result. And uh, really every decision of my life after that was really affected by this moment um, and processing it and uh, moving forward in it to, to do what the work that God had given me to do. Um, and so that of course eventually led me to my ordination, which you can see um, here. Um, post-ordination. And actually the stole I have was given by my family. And here's a better view of it. So um, you'll see me wear the stole um, every now and then uh, here um, for worship uh, when we have a, a good uh, feast day that, that red is required. Um, but it speaks to that journey I had. So you'll see the bridge on the bottom. So that's that bridge that St. Um, Swithin would have crossed um, and that we would have crossed getting over to Winchester Cathedral. And then I've also got the egg there for Winchester um, and specifically for St. Swithin. But then I also, on the other side, across from the egg, there's um, the Tizé cross, which is uh, shaped like a dove. And I actually wear uh, one with me pretty much all the time. So, um, so that's, that, that stole represents that journey that led me to that call, which again, um, started all the way back at Winchester Cathedral. So I'm going to um, stop sharing the screen.
So that's just a little bit about my journey. Um, and I'm gonna open it up at this time for questions. So really before I went to college, um, I was planning on um, going to seminary. I hadn't started the formal process uh, until much later. Um, I would have started the process with my sending parish, uh, would been my junior year of college. Um, and then I would have completed that, I would have, I would have, gone to the diocesan part of that process rather um, after I graduated. Uh, it would have been when I was doing um, AmeriCorps, when I was doing my service year. Um, so then I had a, a year after that where I worked um, for my mentor Heidi in Montana at um, St. Peter's Cathedral out there. And then um, I went to a seminary um, at Suwannee. I didn't choose where I wanted to go to seminary until that year I was out in Montana. Um, I was actually, um, for a while I was in between three, um, Virginia Theological Seminary, uh, the uh, theological, the School of Theology um, at the University of the South in Suwannee. Um, and um, the Seminary of the Southwest out in Austin, Texas. So, and I actually ended up, um, it was between, it ended up being between um, Austin and Suwannee were, were the two um, choices I, I was between and, and then just um, Suwannee. Purely uh, because of, I, I, I wanted more of an academic focus um, because I'd spent a year doing field education, basically like working in a church. And uh, Austin is is much more geared towards field education. So I, I would have cho probably chosen to go there if I had been a different at a different place with, um, if I hadn't just spent a year working at a church. So, but, uh, but that's why I ultimately chose Swanee. So, yeah. It was really that moment in Winchester, um, at the cathedral there, that the bishop asked me that question, and then I just blurted out my answer, like, am I supposed to be a priest? And it was really just, um, I mean, I had, I, it was a very emotional moment for me after that. Um, and when I went into the chapel for Joan of Arc, I was very much in tears at, at that point. And um, which actually, I mean, it's kind of interesting, like looking back now, um, having studied more uh, people like uh, Saint, Ath uh, Saint um, Ignatius of Loyola talks about like in making decisions, having these like moments where uh, sometimes in the Eucharist where he's just like crying. <laughs> um, and so I think like I can relate to that a lot uh, looking back on that event. Um, and it was kind of, in some ways it was event, and it was an event kind of like what saints like Ignatius talk about that it, I don't know that in the moment, um, Although knowing, I mean, thinking back on it, knowing me, I think I would have felt God's presence there, but it wouldn't have been like so much, you know, God coming down and like, I knew the answer right then and there. I think it was, it was the start of this gradual process um, that, that grew into more and more certainty as time went on. Um, because and, and again, I mean, that's that's what I've seen with um, with other saints with their own experiences um, in discerning um, is that there are these like moments, um, but they build into these these other moments there. So it wasn't that at that moment that I knew that I was going to go into ordained ministry. Because really, I, I mean, again, I was so grateful for this time and to say that we had afterwards where I could really reflect on that moment. Um, and and it, again, just be like, what just happened? Um, and, and 
I, I did sort of, like I said, I put it in the back of my mind in some ways after Tizay, but in some ways doing that, like made that sense of there, there's a call that's happened here and get stronger and stronger for me. Um, so yeah, so that's really, it wasn't just, you know, that I knew in that moment, but it was really the, the start of, of a journey um, with that moment. For me, at that point in time, I, I, I was really, I mean, I was really dedicated to the, the church. And, and like I said, I mean, I knew I wanted to study scripture because that was something that interested me. I think that moment where I felt God for the first time was really my confirmation. Um, I think it was just that I, I was making my faith my own that point in time um and, and that would have been i mean I, I i mean to be fair i i did it very i i went through confirmation very young I, I would have been 12 at the time um i think most most churches most clergy including myself would say that's that's very young um there are some some you know granted i have worked with kids in confirmation who are that age and many have been amazing um, going through but it's not every kid and it was I remember at that point in time it would have been it would have been Bishop Parsley um, who would have been the bishop right before Bishop Sloan who was the bishop who ordained me and I I remember him laying his hands on me and just feeling this kind of rush um, in my head. And, and that's still is how I know when I have that same sort of feeling, that's how I know that the Holy Spirit is present with me in that moment. Um, and I think it was because of, it was because of that moment that my faith was important enough for me that I, A, I was on this um, pilgrimage. Um, and be that I was open to being able to hear uh, what God um, was trying to say to me um, at that point. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think those are experiences are different from everybody um, because not everybody, you know, has a moment where you know, they, they hear God speaking to them almost physically. Um, not everybody has this moment where they just know um, right then and there that, that they want to be, that they want to be a Christian or even like a moment where they, that, that they feel that God is calling them to something, uh, to a specific ministry. So yeah, I mean, I, so I want to be affirming of, of people's calls into faith, into ministry, just because they are all very different um, for us. There, there are a lot of similarities, but they, they, are, they are all different. But yeah, I, and I think like part of it too is that, I mean, even with my confirmation, there was a lot of, of time and work and study that went into that. Um, and there was a lot of deliberation too about like how, you know, I wanted that to look, um, how I wanted that to go. Um, you know, for example, there was, um, I, I was in the choir at church and our choir director wanted all of us to be with the choir for the confirmation service. And I think, all of us, or at least the vast majority of us, we wanted to be with the other confirmands that we were being confirmed with. So there was already that sort of, you know, how am I making my faith my own? Um, that just kind of culminated in that moment and in that event. Um, and it's similar with my call to ministry. Um, it was certainly a focus point, but it was, um, it was really just the start of a longer journey too. So yeah, 
yeah, I think we all have different experiences. Um, and again, I just, I want to affirm that journey, whether it's sort of like one moment <laughs> that happens or whether it's this taking this time, like, and seeing this change in us over time, or whether it's a little bit of both too. Yeah. Yeah. Just to, to clarify um, on that, uh, yeah, the, the trip that I was on, this was a diocesan sponsored um, uh -huh. event. And um, actually to give a little bit more about how I found out about this trip, um, Bishop Andrus, uh, the Bishop Suffragan at the time, um, I, I, I had served at his, at his um, ordination as Bishop. Um, I was one of the acolytes there. My brother had written a letter uh, to him um, after that. Um, uh, my brother would have been, I think, third grade at the time. And um, so our family actually got to be close to, to Bishop Andrus and we would, uh, he would hold this um, party uh, in Christmas time where uh, he'd host a, a bunch of people at his house um, and we'd go over and sing carols um, at uh, Episcopal Place, uh, this nursing um, home um, and retirement facility in, in Birmingham. Uh, which was in walking distance, which is, which was nice. And I, I was actually uh, just under the age limit for this, um, this uh, uh, pilgrimage that was going on to England and to say that the diocese was putting on and, and that uh, Bishop uh, Andrews was one of the leaders for. And so um, I and my folks were giving a hard time about <laughs> that I was just at the cutoff for this, it, it was purely teasing. Um, you know, it wasn't something like I had my my heart set on. And uh, he took it seriously and went to whatever board was um, uh, running this this pilgrimage that was facilitating it, and uh, asked for permission for me to to join on this. So after he sent all the, the materials for it, which you know, at that point I felt like I had to look over. I mean, I remember, you know, again, it was, it was looking over like where all they were going for this. And it really, I mean, it was just, it was the right price for that kind of trip. It was something that like I was gonna be able to afford um, going on. And so I remember, you know, looking over, like after looking over at this, looking over at my mother and, um, you know, again, because I was 15 at the time and just saying, I think I have to do this. And, I, and I'm so glad that I did because um, it really, you know, like I said, it really started me on this journey. Um, and the interesting thing um, I, I noted earlier that some of the photos I have are from various points in time, particularly for, for Winchester, uh, um, yeah, for Winchester Cathedral. Um, I, um, I've been back there a couple of times since. Um, I went back uh, when I, um, I, I, I was studying actually over as part of my, my um, seminary training, I was studying over in Cambridge. Um, and so I took a trip to, to go over after the semester ended um, to go back there, um, which was a power, that was a powerful experience. And uh, the photo that again is like, uh, you, you can see at the, the top of my YouTube page um, is, is during that. So they, they've got like the little uh, crash and everything laid out um, there because it would have been um, uh, just shortly before Christmas. Um, and uh, then I was back a little later and I think the photos that have like a lot of the, the scaffolding type stuff uh, in the back was from around this period. Um, I went back, uh, it was four, four years ago now, I think is when it was. Um, and um, 
I was just I was just back visiting England again, and I ended up going to a friend of mine's ordination while I was there too. So it's still it's still been a powerful um, moment for me. I, I have not been back to Tizé since I was I was there, um, and and that's something I would love to do. And you know, I mean, it'd be great. You know, at some point there was a, a group of youth that wanted to to go and do that as well or, or even or even yeah uh, older older youth who who might want to go on that too um yeah because it really it's it's a wonderful place to be um uh brother um brother roger who founded it who un unfortunately um he was assassinated um a few years after I was I was over there, um, so I, I was fortunate enough to get to hear him speak, but um, did not get to meet him. But um, I mean, he he started. He and his sister are Lutherans, and they started this community in France. I think it was during World War II um, to help um, people who were. Um, suffering under Nazi suppression and in France, and um, that community continued afterwards. Um, and it's an ecumenical community, so it's you've, the the brothers who are there from different denominations, and different denominations go and and spend time there. So um, it's really a powerful place to be. Um, so uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance, uh, you know, go and, and spend some time there. And it's really, because it is just really, it's, it's a contemplative place. I, I mean, I don't think of the music as much. I think of those moments of silence uh, where I, yeah, I could just listen to what God had to say. So kind of looking at that question, yeah, um, maybe, maybe a way to frame it, um, times where there's been doubt or times where there's been um, difficulties in my faith. And yeah, I, I think there, there have been many. Um, I mean, in the sermon, my allusion there, um, that was a particularly difficult moment for me um, in, in seminary. Um, and um, it, it was sort of the culmination was, um, I ended up having to redo um, my uh, clinical pastoral education <laughs> um, because I was asked to do so by the diocese and at my diocese and, and by the, the um, seminary. And, that was that was really difficult, um, and and fortunately, I found the right place to go to after that for me and for my my faith. Um, and, but it was yeah, I mean, it was that was a moment where I was, you know, wondering if I wanted to keep moving on, um, and that was that was why finding a counselor was really important to me um, at that at that moment in time. Um, you know, I mean, there've been, there've been a lot of difficult times and there've been times that I've been angry with God, um, even, even in ministry. Um, I mean, I think one of the most difficult things was, uh, just having so much time where, where Sophie and I weren't, um, you know, with each other. I mean, that was a difficult moment too. And I think, yeah, I mean, the pandemic has been a really, really difficult time too. Um, I mean, I think for all of us, but um, I think for those of us in helping ministries, um, it's been a struggle because, you know, we want to make sure we're keeping everybody safe. Um, but, you know, we also want to be able to provide people what they need for their faith too. So it's it, it's 
this dueling dichotomy, I think, that, that does make it difficult. I think for me in those moments, I think one of the most important things for, um, I think all of us in faith, but I think it's particularly important for us as clergy um, is to make sure we are keeping our prayer life up. And I think one of the, one of the difficult lessons I've learned on that is making sure I'm continuing to take a monthly retreat um, that's just for my own um, benefit, for my own spirituality, for my own connection with God. Um, I think we, you know, I, I often have to remind myself that my relationship with God is separate from my career, <laughs> which is very difficult when you're in a career that your life and your faith is so much a part of that. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's, it, it's, it's being able to make sure that I'm taking the time for me. And that's something that's very important. Um, and I think it, there, there, every moment in life, I find that different prayer techniques work. Um, I mean, Compline comes back and forth for me. Um, at various moments, um, uh, noonday prayer is something that that comes back and forth for me at different moments. Um, I mean, I was really fortunate to have studied uh, spiritual direction, so that helped in finding some spiritual disciplines that could help. Um, Lectio Divina is one. Um, so, and, and we're going to actually, not next week, but in a couple of weeks, we're gonna, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about praying in color too, because um, Nick actually did a wonderful job with the music camp this summer in combining those. Um, so we used a little bit of that for the VBS as well. But I, I want to talk about the techniques we did with the because I really got a lot out of it. Um, it. It helped that when when Nick was presenting this this option to the the kids that I I I knew more than the kids did what he was trying to do with them, but I found that personally helpful, and I've and I've found those techniques helpful um, throughout time. Um, there's the examine that. Uh, Ignatius of Loyola um, pioneered, which is basically at its most basic form is asking yourself questions at the end of the day um, to help figure out um, what uh, God, yeah, where God has been working in our lives. So it can be, um, What's something that made you happy today? What's something that didn't make you happy today? What's something you're looking forward to for tomorrow? What's something you're not looking forward to tomorrow? And the examine can be a way that we can ask, uh, that we can see where God is and those, those, those highs and those lows in our lives too. So yeah, I think those are really the ways in which to help with those, at least have been for me, um, those times where I'm struggling with my faith, um, those times where I'm struggling with my relationship with God, uh, is just to say what, what's working, what helps me connect with God more. And I think, I mean, I think sometimes the harder thing is finding what works and then making sure that you're taking the time to do that. Um, which, um, I mean, can be difficult. And, and as, as a clergy person, um, sometimes maybe more <laughs> difficult just because, you know, you, you, I'm, you know, with, with God, I'm, my, my whole work is, is my whole career is centered around serving God, so it can be easy to say, well, I'm doing this now, 
<laughs> and I, so I don't have time for this. Um, whereas really, yeah, we do, we got to just find that time to, to be there with God. Um, and that's, I mean, I think that's another thing too, as clergy, you know, particularly Lent, we do a, I think we do a great job a lot of times of, of I, yeah, I hope we do a great job of, of providing resources and materials for people to have a more holy Lent. And then I think the difficulty then is um, what are we doing to make sure that we are having a holy Lent too? Um, so yeah, that can be the challenge for us is we're providing so many resources and just making sure we're taking the time to for us as well. So, and like I said, it's something I still work on um, and something I suspect I will probably be working on for the rest of my life. Thank you to all who are here and thank you to all who will be watching this later.